Hello, everybody. Greg is now going to speak about Commodore Server or, or screencasting and other good goodies like that. Go ahead, Greg. Hey! Amazing. Amazing. <laughs> All right. Um, so what I'm going to show you today is um, screencasting on the Commodore 64. And what that means is we have one Commodore 64 that's going to um, do an activity and there's going to be multiple people watching it in real time at the same time on their Commodore 64s. Um, but let me first tell you about how the screencasting works. Um, this is a program that, that Steve here wrote um, on, on the Commodore 64. And what it does is it basically sends um, all the character text and a few other um, special codes to change colors and stuff um, over to us to a, an application server running on Commodore server and that server takes requests from other people who are wanting to connect to watch the screencast at the same time and so when that data is transferred to the application server that application server then broadcasts the same data back to everybody else who's joined into the into the screencast so it all happens um, there's no direct communication from this 64 to another 64 this 64 goes directly to the server, and then the server distributes the data to everybody else. So we have um, this computer, which is which is going to be the master, the host of the screencast, um, and then we have on the screen up there one of the viewers who will be watching the screencast, and also Josh, um, Josh, and um, Josh, Corey, Josh and Josh. <laughs> they're also Corey. going to be watching the screencast, so they'll all see the same things on their Commodore at the exact same time. So with that, let's begin. I'm going to start the screencast. Okay. So the screencast has begun, and now everybody who wants to watch the screencast can join into the screencast. And this requires a login on Commodore server. So you'll see this, that there's one screencast running. Screencast number 678, so I'm going to type that in. And now this computer is going to sync up with whatever is being displayed on the master computer. Alright, so you guys all in? Mm -hmm. Okay. So what I'm going to do is just write a simple, basic program and they, um, you get to watch it. it. It looks like I'm typing on that computer, but this is this is the computer. That computer there is the one up there. Watch it. Okay. Maybe I should. Actually, should anyone have any questions first before I before I start typing this in? Yes. This is RS-232, and you have like a hardware... Ah, good question. Or something? Uh, so all of these computers right here are running um, a Comet 64 internet modem. And those, um, they're, just, they're just devices that take RS-232 and send data to the internet at a specific location and receive data from that same location. So all these are connected to Commodore Server, um, which is a, an online yeah. system. Yeah in the back end to connect everybody, getting everybody talking together. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, and Steve just joined. Okay. Blah, blah, blah. Um, there's one other thing I, I, I'm going to try. I don't know if this is going to work because I didn't test it. But if you're logged in as the same person that you're screencasting as, you can, you can send a message in the chat. Because um, we're, we're actually in a room on Commodore Server, and the room is called um, C64. And if you're in that same room, um, you can chat with people there. Um, and if I'm logged in at the same time, I can type a message in chat, and it will show in the screencast. And the reason for that is because um, if 
there's no way to tell your audience what's happening, like why you're, why you're doing something in the screencast. So this allows you to type something in chat and then they'll, they'll see it on the box in the, in the screencast. Yeah. So I just type that in, a, in any number of, there's a number of chat programs you can use. I'm using Meow on, on my Windows machine. Um, and uh, how do you get rid of that? F7. So that allows me to talk to my audience um, without actually uh, typing it here on, on the host machine. So I'm going to write a little program that's just a simple progress bar. This screencast will also support colors too. So if you if you run that, you'll see that I have a oh, point one. Oops. There. So it actually supports colors for the border and background. Now nobody can talk back to you. Nope. You can try all you want. You can type, but it won't come back to me because I'm the only one that's broadcasting. But that's a good question because in a future version. <laughs> in a future yeah. version, yeah, I'm probably saying Steve, future version. Steve made it so that you can actually do two-way communication, oh, awesome. and you can actually control the other person's Commodore 64. Ah. It's really ghost. <laughs> <laughs> this might be too long of a program to type in. Maybe I'll just do. Go to ten. Go to ten. <laughs> Yeah, this is a little longer than I thought it would be. Um, but you have it loaded? You can load it as a file? What's that, what's that program with the, um, the random, you remember the, like oh. Like bar? Um, print. Oh, CHR RG. string of yeah. 201.5 or something like that. No, random. Random, yeah. R&D. Random. You get random I first. I was guess because I can't remember. That can't be it. It just seems like there's something missing. Oh, time. There's a. There's something else right here. I think. Divided by. Two hundred five plus. Plus something. Two hundred five no, plus. No, random one. Oh. Um. Plus two hundred five point five. Put a plus in there. Yeah. Closing crane. Yeah, this had a parenthesis. In line, oh, line 10. Okay. You're missing a colon. Colon instead of semicolon. There you go. So, do you guys see that on your screens? That's a much that's a much shorter program to write. <laughs> but um, another neat thing about this uh, project was that Steve incorporated some um, red link encoding and compression routines, which makes the um, broadcast appear much faster than it than it is. So it it only needs to draw what it needs to draw. Um, run like encoding, I believe, if there's a character that's repeated, it, it only sends that character once and then tells how many times it's repeated or something like that, um, which is really good. This is running at 2400 baud, and it's pretty fast. Um, you have to actually have repeated data for it to, to show, right? like Labyrinth would do it, yeah. which I do. Big chunks of open spaces. Yeah, I could try that. Well, that. well, that's that's not going to work well. But I'll just skip that. So um, I don't know what else can you do. You can do the border and background color. So for let's see, was one, two, three, four, five, six. Now you'll see this will kind of show um, some of the latency that's involved um, because. It's not going to flash as fast as it would on a real machine, but it's not bad. 
you need you need a delay to make these. Yeah, yeah, we could put a delay in, and it would improve the. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, that kind of shows it. Oh, it's too good. It's more like it's on the cursor 646 color. Not yet. But I will. So what this is good for, um, if you wanted to show your friend some kind of basic program, it really only works with text at this point. Um, I think Steve wanted to put some sprite support in there so you could do um, simple sprite graphics. Um, maybe some other important um, memory locations for poking and peeking. Um, what else? Different graphics mode, potentially. My, my goal would be to make it emulate as much as possible, but there will be limits. Yeah. One of the, one of the nice things that we, we did this for was uh, for our club. Um, we used to be teaching people in our in our club some assembly language and basic and this would allow us to extend that classroom setting to um, people who join us uh, remotely because we also have a remote um, capability to join us in our club meetings every month you can you can log into the server and chat with us in the chat program um, so if we're running a screencast in our in our club meeting anybody could watch it in the world Pretty simple, small demo. Any questions? You can't play a game, regular game, and have your uh, connections watch it, right? You can if it's basic and character driven, not not graphics driven. So we had, we actually had Labyrinth. You know, remember the old game Labyrinth? On I'm the setting up the demo. The demo. Oh, you okay. want to join the other? Okay. Um, text adventure. Text adventure would work, okay. uh, assuming it didn't do anything fancy with pokes or. Um, Oregon Trail. Certain disc activity. <laughs> yeah, probably most com copy protected commercial games wouldn't work because they're going to take over the whole system. But it, you could you could potentially hack it or do a cracked copy. Okay. So does this actually read? But the idea is that it will also watch other memory locations to change and transmit them as it notices them. So if you do poke 1024 comma zero, it wouldn't notice it. But if you do poke to the background color, it would notice it.
now it's not limited to 2400 baht either. This, um, it is at the moment. Steve is actually working on supporting the 38K version of the RS232 driver. Um, not sure how far along you are on that. Probably not demoable, huh? Maybe. That's the idea. <laughs>